All right. Ready? Are we recording? Oh, yeah. I've been recording. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is uh, a book club that we have formed. Uh, if you don't know, it's a podcast about two girls who love books. Two it's girls with too many books. Bookaholics. Bookaholics. That is the name of said podcast. Um, Ashlyn wouldn't let me call it two books, two girls, one book. I absolutely would not <laughs> let her call it that. I was like, excuse me, woman, we're not, that's not happening. Um, Does Gen Z know so, about that? Girl, I hope not. <laughs> But yes, I'm sure they probably do. Hmm. Okay. That was disgusting. All it, right. It was, it so, was. we um, we are recording from our homes today because I am gearing up to go back to work. Oh, my cat was in here the whole time. Oh, uh, well, Were yeah, you under it's my... It's Welly's birthday. It is Welly's birthday. He's five. Were you under my desk? Wellington. He says, yeah, Mom. I was trying to get rubs and pets. Come here. Oh, let me show you. We're always at Ashlyn's house. So it's you... a baby wet. Oh. He's on my headphones. Hi, Lenny Tate. He can't hear me. Here Lenny he is. Uh, oh, for those who bad. can't see him, he is a Russian blue. And he's a big boy. He's overweight. We relate. Really... But he will not let me give him a diet, so he abuses he's his brother cat. and steals his food. I know. Yeah. Happy birthday, Wellington. Five Happy whole birthday. years old. All right. Goodbye. Love you. Go back down. Okay. Jackson's still. Oh, he's on the couch. So, as I said, we are recording from our homes today because I'm gearing up to go back to work. And um, it's a little hard to get over to Ashlyn's house because she does live almost an hour away from me. And once work starts, it's probably going to be harder. So we're testing this out. We're seeing if it's good. We're actually recording two episodes in one today. So hopefully we can have extra content and we don't fall behind once we're both really busy with life. Yes. Although, to be fair, I've been busy with life this whole time. Just I've been saying. enjoying my summer off because working for a school is sometimes great. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Because right now, my email is just blowing up. School starts next next Wednesday, so like the 10th. But I go back to work on Wednesday, the 3rd. I've had parents blowing up my email because I'm not releasing their kids' schedules. Because they didn't turn in their vaccinations. Sucks to suck. Sucks to suck. Yeah, I know. And I, the thing was, I was talking to my principal. I sent out three, three mailed notices in the spring. We did mailed. Mailed. Wait, you actually like spent postage. Yeah. Gross. Like I mean, I didn't have to do it. I mean, all I did was get the three hundred letters, rubber band them, put them in the out box with a slip saying the school was going to pay for postage. But I had to. I had to hand stuff three hundred envelopes. But I've been dealing with this since last school year, notifying these parents that they're behind on immunizations. They weren't delinquent. Now they're delinquent, and their kids can't start school next week because they didn't get their shots done. I've also been sending out, like, phone calls. Like, I, I asked my assistant principal to send out a phone call on Monday, like, last week, and he did, and I got 50 emails in one day. Wow. From parents. I heard, <laughs> I heard almost nothing all summer, 50 emails in one day, but guess what? I don't go back to work till Wednesday, so... That's Wednesday year's problem. Y'all y'all can deal with that. I'm not going to panic because y'all didn't plan accordingly. Y'all. I love that yeah. you're acting as if they're listening to our podcast. If they are. If they are, wow. get your kids' shots updated. And also, you don't know her. And be sweet to your school nurses, okay? We deal with your kids all day. Yeah, and just be sweet in general. Be a, be a good human. Um... Well, we've chit-chatted a bit. Um, so <laughs> I complained a bit. A book podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is um, a book podcast. This is a book podcast. Uh, we uh, we do a book club. These, yes, that it. She did not hold it still. Um, if you did not know, we did have to change this week's uh, podcast book to "Wreck and Ruin" by Emma Slate. Um, we read the other one, and quite frankly, it ended on cliffhanger, and there was a 
there were just things that we decided this was not a good fit for the podcast. Maybe later, probably not. Um, Listen, guys, I rated it a two out of five. Some people I'm, are harsh. I rated it a four out of five. Did you really? You rated that yeah. book a four. Yes. <laughs> I'm also not as hard of a grader as you. We've gone over this. I rated that book a two out of five, and I will not recommend books that low, in my opinion. So The second one has come out, and I will be reading it. If anyone is interested, just hop on over to my degrees. So we did update Instagram, though, that we changed the book. So if you are not following us on Instagram, I highly suggest you go follow Bookaholics Podcast. So that way, if we do have to change a book in the future, you get notified and you're not reading the wrong book. Yes, because we definitely don't, I mean, you can read other books, like you can, you can read books in addition to what we're reading, but uh, if you're listening, we obviously want you to follow along, because then it's not as fun if you don't know anything, um, and we don't want to spoil it. So, uh, as a quick synopsis, uh, Wreck and Ruin is a motorcycle club book, which I was pumped about, by mm-hmm. the way. Um, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since we read a motorcycle club book. It has been a minute, but let me tell you guys, Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling always will be my favorite. Um, everyone else has a lot to live up to. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Wreck and Ruin. It was actually a very, very good book. Shocker. What do you think I rated it? Wait, you had to get the synopsis before we oh, rate it. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, you're throwing so people synopsis. off. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So the synopsis is, um, I'm so bad with names, Haley. Do you remember their names? Well, Colt was the guy and Mia was the girl. There we go. Okay, so uh, Mia uh, was living her best life as bartender, and then some shit went down with another motorcycle club. Um, and long story short, they end up, I'm not reading the synopsis, by the way, I'm just hoping I'm not spoiling anything. <laughs> I don't think I am. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know it's a motorcycle clip. Um, yeah, I'm reading into, it right now. You're, you're doing okay. You're not revealing anything. They get into a, a tiff with the other, uh, motorcycle. It's, you know, head against head, also a love story. So that's just your really brief synopsis. Um, I don't think I can say hardly anything else without spoiling something. I found this book on TikTok because the author has a TikTok and she posted this reel and it was basically like, I was a bartender, this guy was harassing me, I saw this big strong guy, I went over there and asked him to pretend to be my boyfriend to get the other guy to leave me alone. And just when she thought he wasn't going to answer her, he leans down and kisses her. And then when she goes back, her friend's like, do you know who you just kissed? And that's what hooked me. And that's when I sent it to Ashlyn and I was like, hey, let's read this book because that's all I'm going off of. <laughs> yes. By the way, that is literally like the opening scene of the book. So it you is. you are definitely not, I mean, it's obviously not a spoil. But, like it um, is page two. Like I thought it was going to be a little bit deeper in this book. It's page two, opening scene. Yes. She kisses the president of the motorcycle club, mm-hmm. which always classic by the way the uh i don't necessarily know that there are yeah there's some trigger warnings i mean drugs um death death yes i mean Uh, motorcycle books yeah motorcycle club books usually have violence someone usually dies they usually run drugs as their income so it's like that gray area so if you're not down for like Sons of Anarchy vibes. Yes, maybe don't it is it. also an age gap, which is my favorite. Not crazy age gap, but yeah, it was what? I mean, I mean it was thir- like, like thirteen, 13 years. years. Yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, it's it's a pretty significant. I mean, it's not like five years. <laughs> uh, tropes. Which, I really think this is a grumpy sunshine. It absolutely is. It's also an insta love, which insta-love. we had a long discussion about mm-hmm. pre-recording. Yes. Uh, but yes, I think that's just about everything that I would like to say before we deep dive into that. Yeah, so if you didn't read it yet, if you haven't read it, this is your time to stop the recording, go get the book, because after we get past this part, all bets are off. We're going to talk we about did, some spoilers. 
Yes, since we did change it, I would be quite shocked. Uh, unless you follow us on Instagram, I'd be quite shocked if you did read it. So please, yes, go hit that little pause button. Go read it literally like right now and then come back. Um, so. If you're still here, let's get going. What did you rate it? No, you were going to go first. You were really okay. excited. You said, guess what I rated it. Haley, guess what I rated it. Five out of five. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like I know you. How did you know? How did you know? Uh, yes, I gave it a five out of five on both scales because, again, I'm here for it. I am not a harsh grader. As you say a lot, guess what I rated it? I would say you rated the plot a five out of five and the smut a four out of five. I rated the plot a four out of five and I rated the smut a two out of five. <laughs> what? I loved this book. I did. But listen. How is anybody supposed to know you love this book when you rate books like that? I this rated is the, why we can't have you rated things. I rated the book a four out of five. I'm saying the spice well, you level. Gave the smut a two out of five. I'm know. talking about the degree of spiciness. This book was actually not crazy spicy. But for the spice that was there. <laughs> We have different grading styles. I think that's what it is. I think it I'm is. Like, you grade, grade by the there. scene. Yeah, you grade by, like, how good the scene is. I grade by, like, overall spice. Like, is this a really spicy novel? Is this more focused on plot? Like, I go off of that. I enjoyed yeah, so, the spice a lot. I mean, okay, honestly, this is a good thing to note, though. So, people listening, if you are interested in how much the amount of smut in said book, always listen to Haley's score. If you want to know how good the smut was that was in it, listen to my score. So that is how we will differentiate from now on. And I love that. At least yeah. it gives two kind of perspectives. Because honestly, uh, I loved the spice that was there. I loved it. But there wasn't a lot of it. And honestly, a lot of her scenes ended up fading to black. Like once yes. they once they did the deed, then it like faded off. And I was like, I'm a, I'm okay with it in this book. I mean, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I was like more invested in the plot than the sex, which doesn't happen all that often, and I was like, who? I mean, sure, it's a fade to black, but like honestly, I'm more curious right now, is, is that her death? It was. It was. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll get to we'll get point. to that. I want to start off by saying, this book took place in Waco, Texas. I was like, how many times have you gone where, to Waco? Sway, where? Wh where is there a fucking motorcycle club in Waco, Texas. Ashlyn, there are motorcycle clubs in Waco, Texas. Where? <laughs> That's where Magnolia is. That's why I was laughing. I was like, they picked the one, like, city in Texas? Yeah, you don't remember all the, there was, like, violence and, like, shootouts in the news because yeah, the motorcycle club's in there. Okay, Waco, Texas is, like, an hour and a half from Dallas, not that far. Um, but Waco, Texas is where Chip and Joanna Gaines live, and they have Magnolia, and, uh, like, the stores, and it's, it's Shiplap Central. So I love visiting Waco because I've, I've gone to Magnolia, and I've loved it. Other than that, there's nothing in Waco except for Baylor University. Correct, which is also why I was very confused, because I was like... Y'all are acting like this is not literally a Christian-run university town. There are motorcycle clubs in Waco. I am shook it right now. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the other town that no one's ever heckin' heard of. The one, I can't even say the name, but Coeur d'Alene? Is that it? Yeah, it's like French. <laughs> I but was like... The, but it was so like random. Was it Idaho or I, Illinois? It was one of the I, I states. I didn't read it. Don't know where that it. one is. I knew Waco. I was excited because I knew Waco. I'm not that far from Waco. But I and think... then they were like, we have cabins out in Louisiana. And I was like, wow. I was like, really just where in term. Louisiana? Nacogdoche? Same question. <laughs> Same question. Like, I'll, I'll hit you up. I, it, not that long of a drive to get to Louisiana. True. Um, so yeah, so this takes place in Waco, which apparently there are motorcycle clubs. Wow. Oh, maybe I need to visit. No, no. Hey, we'll go to Magnolia. Well, obviously, but I meant more like where the motorcycle. I just want to like see like are they hot? Ashlyn, and... calm down. You have a boyfriend. <sighs> I'm, you're right. What's Jeremy gonna say? 
He's gonna say, He's not. vroom vroom, get on my bike, beesh. Hey, Jeremy, if you do get a bike, we're getting on that bitch. Oh my god. Anyways, um, so, yeah, uh, this was an insta-love, which I have to say, not my absolute favorite. I, I think mm -hmm. I've gotten so used to being tortured with slow burns that when it was insta i literally was like this isn't right this 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 can't be the person she ends up with there's no way like there has to be it happens so fast like, what else is the rest of the book about yeah it um, definitely happens like so fast it kind of caught me off guard yes and i was like wow they're having some really strong feelings for knowing each other for a week but then i thought oh wait what about that one nicholas sparks dear john is it where the whole thing happens in a week I've never read Dear John. I haven't either, but I've watched it. I watched the movie, and all I remember is Amanda Seyfried. I remember nothing about it. Just you don't like... even remember the male? No, who was it? Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> Channing. Oh Channing. Channing. Channing, no. darling. Isn't, um, isn't a Dear John a breakup letter? Didn't she get the, with the guy? Didn't she get with the guy that had, like, cancer? Like, she married the guy with yes. cancer? Spoiler alert on Dear John if you haven't seen it. Yes, I do think she did get... And then I think he died. And then I think they still ended up together. At the very, very, very end. I can't. Nicholas Sparks does some great things and he does some not great things. I am not a fan of reading Nicholas Sparks. Mainly because I just don't want to put myself through all of that reading for it to be crap. I mean, <laughs> it's. I watched A Walk to Remember first. Because that was the movie. Like, it was the movie. The Who movie. cares about the notebook? A Walk to Remember was amazing. But Mandy Moore, Mandy Moore is the actress. I read, did not finish. I started reading A Walk to Remember and put it down because that girl is blonde. <laughs> wow. It's one uh, of the instances where the movie was better, in my opinion. Like, I love the movie. To be fair, Mandy Moore was blonde in Princess Diaries, so. Well, she was not in a walk to remember, so. That is true. I really love that. I will probably watch it after this uh, podcast recording. But, uh, yeah. So, Insta, Insta love. love. It was. It was a little much for me. I've never read that before. But it was also, like, the part that threw me off was that Colt chose to be single basically his whole life no girl ever did it for him and the only instant where they had met was when she asked him to kiss her at the bar and then he immediately yes. went out of town for a week yes and then when he came back that was when she was like waiting on the doorstep of the auto shop and then yes. he was just like i'm gonna i'm gonna protect you now and i was like you kissed once <clears throat> yes and then she didn't call the cops on you when you put the guy up in the alley and apparently that's when he knew. And I was like... It just... I don't know. I mean, I guess it happens, but it feels like so far-fetched and unrealistic that I just can't be on... I can't get on board with it. All right, well... So he's 38 and she's 25. Yes, I know because I highlighted that note, so I knew their ages. I literally wrote down age gap, age. 28, 35. And then I did the, the sweating emoji with the tongue out. Um, he's got tattoos, which is my weakness. Hey, Jeremy, do you want to get tattoos? I'm in. Maybe not matching, but I'm in. I picked up my next uh, tattoo, by the way. We'll talk about it later, but yes, I did. Yes, please. Um, I literally wrote, well, goddamn, they cozied up together at his house pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, especially because yeah. he never brings women to his house, yet he brought the girl there that he's protecting. I was like, okay, Colt. All, okay. Yeah, all because he didn't want her at Zip's house, even though there was Zip and Joni, even though there was Zip and Joni, you know what I mean? Like, Was it Joni or J Janie? What's her name? Joni. It's Joni? With an O? It's Joni. It's oh. Joni. Yeah, that whole dynamic made me mad. I put somewhere in here that I was hoping <clears throat> the second book would be about Joni and Zip until it was apparently also this book. And I was like, oh! I think and it is, though. I think the second book is still about them. Well, that's really interesting, because, I mean, we didn't get all the dirty details, but, like, oh, we know. <laughs> like, we kind of know their story. Um, 
so I just thought that was really interesting. Oh, I also loved, it's very specific, that the first night she was staying at his house, he made her a steak dinner. And I was like, I mean, to be fair. With no sides. Also that. But I was like, <laughs> way to my heart is a steak dinner. And Jeremy knows it. But I was like, um... I, I kept waiting for him to at least, like, throw potatoes on the grill or something. And I was like, you're just eating meat. Yeah. I was like, I love steak, too, but give me something else with it, bud. But I like that they both cooked. And he's like, well, I had to learn to cook, obviously. I, I liked that she took over, like, head old... I don't like that they call them old ladies. But, like, she took over, like, head old lady duties. And, like, she was, yeah. like, cleaning up. And she was, like, cooking for the guys. And, um... I did highlight this one quote because I really liked it, but it was basically when he was like, you have to get me tattooed on you to, like, prove that, like, you're part of the Blue Angels. And I was like, aggressive, bro. Aggressive. But she, it, she said, you never said you loved me, Colt, and now you want me to get something permanent on my body. You don't think that's a little insane? And then he said, I just told you that I'd rain down hell if anyone fucked with you. What do you, what the hell do you think I was talking about? It's like, because he didn't, like, he, I don't even, does he ever actually say I love you to her? I think he does. Okay. But yeah, like, when that whole thing was happening and he was like, get it tattooed and all this stuff, and she's like, oh, it's been three days! <laughs> I was like, yeah, true sis, true. It's like, you didn't really think it this through. Yes. Um, I, one random thought. I did realize, which I've known before, but it just solidified that I am very much a fan of the forced proximity trope. I I enjoy it as well. Um, and also, quick random note, I can't believe we went through the whole fucking book and not one time did she get on his motorcycle. <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> she didn't. Because she had the cast on. Yes, I even wow. thought maybe the epilogue. Maybe it'll be in the epilogue. Not one time. I'm like, this is what sort of horse club book is this? That made me mad. I, I didn't even real think mad. about <laughs> it. Yeah, I know. Oh, I took I took note of that because obviously Welcome to the Dark Side. I have to compare. It's not it's just in my blood. I, I kinda wanna reread it. Welcome to the Dark Side. I will be rereading it. Now, can we do that for Adrian? We'll do it for Patreon. Let's, but we're in, we're still doing credence for this month. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I want to say his name, his real name is James. <laughs> we did not escape the Jameses. I love that. This keep happening. I love that they only said James like twice, and I he went by Colt that. the whole time. Because I was like, I don't even see him as a James. I was like, there are too many Jameses in my books right now. I was like, he's Colt. But I just, the small fact that his real name is James, I was like, Ashlyn? Yes. Again, like, again, and I'm not trying to be that person, but, like, there are so <clears throat> many names in the world. So many. How is it possible? Are we just reading all the wrong books? Like, I don't understand how James is always the main character name. I don't know. And, like, I loved James as a name up until we started reading more of these books. And I was like, I honestly can't stand looking at the name James right now. I can't either. And the fact of the matter that we read... I didn't even finish a third one. Like, I didn't finish it. But and all three of them. And I was it was like, James, James, James. It's like, go away, James. Yes, just stop. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so... I just want to say that I called it with night. Oh, I called it. absolutely. The minute I he was, like, shocked looking at her, I was like, hey, Dad. Yes. I specifically wrote, first meeting with Knight, why is he acting like that? OMG, is that her dad? Like this small ass little, small ass little French town, it wouldn't be that far of a stretch. And then literally the next line in all caps I wrote called it. It just, I think it was because she mentioned that the girl, like Mia was from Coeur or whatever, like her mom was from there. And yes. then what a small world, a Blue Angels chapter is also in Coeur and I was like, hmm. And then the minute Knight was suspicious, I was like, okay. Yes. He's going to yeah. be the dad. Yeah. But it wasn't that big of a mystery. It made it, it made me feel better, though, that he didn't know about her. Because I was like, yes. for the Blue Angels to be, like, so about family, like, he never tried to be part of her life. 
And then when they were talking and she said, did you know about me? And he said, no. I was like, okay, that makes yeah. me feel better. Because I was about to yeah. be like, fuck you, Knight. But I like, I enjoy, I mean, I kind of wish there were a little more character development around their whole relationship. Mm-hmm. But the little that there was, I liked it. I liked that he dove on top of her during yeah. the whole shootout thing to protect her. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there were like little things that I enjoyed, but I do wish that we had kind of gotten to explore their potential future father-daughter relationship. Um, especially because, as we know, uh, both Colt and Mia had fucked up parent pasts. Mm-hmm. And it would just be so nice for her to have a dad that's there and alive and paying attention to her. What was the scene where she called him dad? Do you remember? I, think I wish I would have it highlighted it. End. Yeah, I wish I would have highlighted yeah. it, but I didn't. But, like, she said, like, something like she was walking outside and said dad. And I, was I remember. Like, it may have, was it the epilogue? No. Um, because he was already back in whatever small s- town, state. Um, no, it, I, oh, it was at all the funerals. Which. Oh, by the way, R.I.P. to Shelly and Cheese. Yeah, like, was that necessary? But, like, no I spoiler. feel like we could have killed off maybe Cheese, but, like, Shelly? But, like, Cheese? I loved <laughs> Cheese. I also loved you because how he got his nickname, I was like, oh my gosh, that's how Bailey got me as a friend. <laughs> cheese, it's the way to our heart. But it was just like, cheese, you know, he had the little brother he was trying to like help. Silas. And I'm so glad Mia took in Silas, but um, no, I, I think that both of those deaths could have been avoided with someone else dying. Like, I don't know, Reaper. Like, we barely even know Reaper. I, I love Boxer. It's a motorcycle club. I know, like it has but to be Welcome somewhat. to the Dark Side did it to me too. That's be prepared. True. If you're reading that for Patreon, whenever we do it, like they'll rip your heart out too with a character death. <sighs> um, I very specifically wrote in my notes because, you know, Mia was the next of kin for Shelly mm-hmm. and she had to be the deciding factor. And I wrote, OMG, could I pull the plug on Ellie? I'd like you to answer, or I'd like you to know that I still have not answered that. So, um, if you're worried, uh, I don't think I could, so, sorry. Well, um, Ashlyn, I want you to pull the plug on me. But don't worry, but it's like, how not- long? Because I feel like she did it, like, immediately, and I just can't, I So, can't Ashlyn, that. the doctor said she was brain dead, and she had, like, multiple organs, stuff going on. If anyone says I'm brain dead... Let me go. Don't keep the body going. But also, my next of kin is now my husband because we're married. Sorry, love. <laughs> like, but also, yeah. it's not gonna have to come down to you making that decision. It's gonna be Matt. <laughs> He's gonna be a mess. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, he has to live with that. <laughs> Sucks to suck. No, but uh, really, when they were describing Shelley's predicament and they were saying that she's brain dead, the ventilator is breathing for her, and they're going through all this stuff from a medical aspect, I was like, yeah, pull the plug. She's not going to pull. It's like, she's not going to come out of that. Which yeah. is what I think Mia was trying to tell, um, what was the fiance's name? I can't think of it. Patrick? No. Not. Well, whatever the fiance, because he, you know, obviously, like, he's very emotional and he didn't want the plug to be pulled. But Mia was trying to convey, like, hey, like, she's not coming back. But also... Yeah. I just goes to show this is what Shelly was warning her about, and then Shelly had to be the one that died. Yeah, that it really that part really bothered me. But uh, after Shelly was trying to be a great friend and embracing her new life, and ugh. yes, um, I enjoyed that she kind of became one with the other old ladies. Yeah, that's true. Um, she got some I'm new girlfriends. That she had, yeah, that support system, um, and like. It kind of literally is in her blood, and I'm just sad that Shelly didn't get to see that. Like, didn't get to see that... No, she introduced her to Knight, though. But they didn't know, right? They didn't know. They didn't know at the time. Did they? They knew. She Uh, introduced her to Knight, so at least, like, Shelly knew that Mia found her dad. Mm. But still, then she was literally shot five seconds later, so... Um, Yeah, that whole show with... Uh, they don't usually go after women and children and now they're like a yard sale? I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I was just messing up. Um, 
but at the very end, <laughs> here I keep, I'm doing this all the time, uh, where he ended the whole, I mean, the whole, I think it was the whole, the whole book before the epilogue, the last words were marry me, and I was like, Twilight? <laughs> <laughs> I liked the I liked the um, conflict scene. I enjoyed that there was conflict because I feel like I read a lot of books. Alexa is speaking right now. Um, I don't know what she's. I think she's giving me a definition of something. <laughs> you must have said something and she just ran with it. Yes. Uh, I. Uh, she's still talking. She just said thanks for the feedback. I can't hear her at all. That's how that. Uh, I like that there was conflict because sometimes I read these books and it's like the conflict is not even a conflict you know when we <laughs> way back when in high school when we were learning about the little you know the thing thing mm -hmm. the little, where the conflict resolution like they were supposed the to be like the very escalation conflict and then <laughs> resolution yeah and I feel like sometimes when I read it, I'm like, where was the conflict? Did it just not happen? There are a lot of books that I've read, specifically romance, that sometimes it's just straight erotica, I guess. But I'm like, there was no conflict. Like, there was even a little plot, but no conflict. And I enjoyed that there was some sort of, like, build up to this scene. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we're trying to take down... Dex? De De Oh. <laughs> what, what was, was his, his name? name? The Iron the Horseman. Main, yeah, the bad guy. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't we tried tell to take you. that guy down. down. And uh, I really feel like it was Dex, but I'm probably wrong. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they went to the warehouse, and like they finally got him. And I enjoy that while Mia was in the hospital, in a bed, Colt left and got her revenge for her. Yes, I was also with Mia, though, and I was mad initially, and I was like, why the hell did he leave? Because also, Zip did not help that situation by being like, Colt left. He yes. left. And then Knight was yes. the one that was like, nah, girl, hang on. He he we went to go do something. Mm -hmm. And then he came, yes. Colt came back and explained. But yeah, the whole Zip, I was like, mm-mm. And then, I don't know, I don't like the Zip and Joni dynamic. I just don't understand how it was like it was nothing and then it was a little sexual tension which not for very long and then all of a sudden Mia catches the mid makeout session yeah and then all of a sudden Colt is punching on him because she's now his old lady yeah. I was like okay is this insta love just like the whole series like I don't understand there was no but they like just up. yeah because Joni was telling her, like, I've had feelings for Zip for years or whatever, but I can't, we can't be together because I'm Colt's sister and all this stuff. And then it was really weird when Mia forced Zip to drive Joni and her to the clubhouse, even though Joni had her own car. But then Mia was like, oh, this is really awkward. And she just, like, left. And I was like, I you're the one that wanted there to be tension. And then you're like, oh, this is awkward. And she walked away. I was like, you you literally put us in this situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Agreed. There, there were small several... things. I think that's why I rated it a four out of five. Like, there were small things. I was like, this, I don't like this. Or this was not thought out well. I don't know. But no, overall, but it was a good book. It was a good book overall. Let me see. Did I actually rate it a five? Because now I'm feeling like maybe I did. Maybe I gave it a four. Wreck and Rowan. Let's see. I did. I gave it four stars. Oh. Yes, you did. And, the, uh, and there you have it. I there were yeah. I was like, mm, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I did give it a five. So, on the spice level, though, again, the spice that was there, I would still probably say a four or five. Um, but yeah, it was good overall. Um, quite frankly, like I said, all it made me want to do is now read Go Welcome to, or Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. Yeah, but that yeah. is not what we're reading next week because we do have that book picked out. We're actually going to take a different kind of turn and do a book genre that neither of us have really read before, and we're going to do a sports romance. So, we are. it's called The Deal, 
by L. Kennedy. Kennedy. It's kind of hard to see on here. If you're uh, listening on the podcast, it's basically a girl in a jersey. Um, Okay. (laughs) It's called The Deal by L. Kennedy. The premise is that this really studious girl likes this guy, but he doesn't notice her. And then this other guy, who is a hockey player, is failing a class, and he really needs a tutor. So they kind of use each other to grab first guy's attention. For sure. Very um, simple, simple synopsis. But yes. quick trigger warning. Uh, we'll mention it in the next episode as well. But there is history of sexual assault with the main female character. Nothing that's written explicitly in the book. It's something that happened five years prior to the book starting. But it is important because it she has to deal with like certain things in the present day because of her trauma in the past. So if that's a trigger for you, skip the next book if you don't want to read about it. Okay? For sure. All right. Anything else to add with Wreck and Ruin? Um, I don't think so. I would just like to know what your good thing that happened this week was. Oh. Um, oh. I battled the DMV today. So, I got married last September, and it's August, so I'm coming up very quickly on my one-year anniversary, and I have yet to fully change my name legally to my husband's name. So, I handled my social security uh, last month, and I got my new card, and I went to the DMV today, and I was there for 40 minutes, but the girl that I got was really sweet, and of course, I was fully prepared. I had a whole folder, and I was like, marriage certificate birth certificate, driver's license. I had my passport. I had printouts of my mortgage, my car insurance, and my W-2. Wow. Because they said they needed proof of residency to make sure you lived in Texas. And so they listed out stuff that you could do. I didn't need any of it. Oh, good. Because I handed over my Texas driver's license. She's like, so what are we doing? And I was like, I'm just changing my name. And she's like, okay. And I was like, that was it? That was it. Oh. But yeah, it took two seconds once I was actually talking to the teller and she typed in all the new stuff. So I get my new license in like two weeks and then I get to change everything else to my new last name. Yay! Well, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and quite frankly, good that you only had to wait 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you had to make an appointment. They don't allow walk-ins. But my appointment was at one fifty, and I didn't get to sit down with somebody until like almost 2 30 it was like 2 25 when i sat down with someone i was like okay yes so much um, for having an appointment <laughs> i would like to throw back real quick to uh when i needed my passport in like four days mm, mm-hmm. so <laughs> i feel you on those government buildings and such that you have to go sit and wait at um uh, but if anyone is interested in how to get a passport expedited very quickly email us. I'll give you the end. I'll give you everything you need to know. Uh, But Ashlyn, tell me, what's your happy thing this week? um, I have two. Ooh, two. Um, Let me settle back. My first one is that I went on a trip with my parents and I did not kill them. Oh, yes. Your week-long trip in Tennessee my week long trip uh it was 10 days i don't know what's happening my cat is sneezing well in 10 well in 10 hey i said it's my birthday i can do what i want bud a lot of sneezes you done uh wellie not to be insensitive but i'm talking about my good thing you can't even see him but he's like literally like right below where the camera cuts off yeah um yeah, so I was uh, 10 days with my parents, and five of those days were stuck in an RV. It looked really pretty, though, because you guys went to the lake or something. We did. We went to the Smoky Mountains, which was really fun. Um, I have just realized, along with Haley's assistance, that I am simply, in the nicest way possible, too old to be going on these extremely long trips with my parents and no buffer. Um, so, that is my first good thing. I did not kill them. Yay! My second good thing is much more exciting, which I have already mentioned 
uh, in this podcast is that I am official with uh, my little boy, Jeremy. Jeremy! Jeremy. Uh, Haley's not yet met. Uh, my parents do not know. So, we are living our best life. And but I've I... seen pictures of Jeremy. You sent me, like, almost a selfie of him. He was doing this. So. He was doing that, yes. A peace uh, sign for those who can't see. He did, like, a peace sign and says so. Yes. So, uh, those are my two good things that have happened um, in the past two weeks. since our last podcast. Well, um, I'm really excited about Jeremy, mainly because I want to hurry up and meet him. But I am uh, holding and keeping my distance because it's such a new relationship. I don't want to creep him out yet, but it's a happy excitement. That is a, probably a good thing. Um, give us maybe like a few more weeks under our belt and then... Oh, fine, I guess. Again, okay, so for all those in the podcast, I'm sorry, Jeremy, for just like airing everything, but uh, his weekend is Thursday, Friday, which is not super phenomenal, but we're making it work. Um, it's very helpful that I work from home right now, um, but when it comes to doing many social things, it is not easy because most people have Saturday, Sundays off. Um, mm -hmm. So, we're enjoying it for now, um, and yeah, that's all that I'd like to share with the general public. <laughs> Great! <laughs> yeah! Well, so, then, I guess that's everything for this episode. Yes. Um, go download or buy or however you listen slash read books. Uh, go get The Deal by L. Kennedy. That will be the one we are talking about next week. And um, anything to add? You got it. Oh, follow us on social media. Just in case we have to change, you know, make changes. It's any combination of Bookaholics podcast. All the pictures yes. are the same. It's our little logo. So if you find an account that doesn't have that logo, you're on the wrong account. So, yes. Bookaholics Podcast. Have, if you have any recommendations, right. DM us, email us, get in contact because we want your rec 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 recs. And just to reiterate again, our Patreon book for August is going to be Credence by Penelope Douglas. So we have not posted it yet on Patreon. We still have to record that one. But if you want to go over to Patreon, we still have Praise by Sarah Kate and In Flight by R.K. Lily on there. So head on over if you want to hear those books and Credence is coming out later. That is true. Well, have a super great two weeks and we'll see you again soon, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.